And gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to the Star Ladder I League Invitational Season 4. We're going to be hopping into game number three. That's right, we go in the distance here in Optic versus Animal Planet. And each game has felt, to me at least, a little bit like draft wins both times. I'm not sure what you think, Tsunami. What's your, what's your thoughts? Game one felt like a draft win for Optic. Game two, I, like... I... Radiant team. I don't know. It's it's tough to say. Like I, I do agree that there was definitely a big draft influence in the way that Optic Gaming had to play their lanes, but I I don't know. I th the fact that Animal Planet are like so self sacrificial with their one position, I think it's something that Optic are going to be able to exploit moving forward. And the fact that Animal Planet have now revealed their mid laner, which it's Five not a hundred percent guaranteed remaining. that it will be a Bryle puck, but. The previous series that they played with VGJ Storm, Animal Planet did play Bryle Puck, whereas Optic Gaming prefer a Zai offlane puck. It looks like Animal Planet are preferring a mid lane puck. And so, if I was Optic Gaming, Dia I would team. look at the past two games and I would be like, okay, Ritsu is not interested in farming. And so, if we just continually bully the mid lane and we make sure that we get a really strong mid lane matchup, then Animal Planet are, are going to struggle to get into the game. And so, last game it worked almost to, according to plan because like Zai was never even in the off lane and still Ritsu was like the third most farmed core on his Five team seconds. and so Remain. normally when you sacrifice an off lane that heavily then the one position just balls out of control but Animal Planet don't play that style and so again I wouldn't be surprised if Optic give Zai a very mobile off laner they actually ban out Clockwork themselves because I thought Clockwork would be a choice hero like for that kind of role um Nyx Assassin's not really played as a solo offliner these days, but that would work also. But I think they they need to, as odd as it sounds, play the same way that they did in the previous game. Because if they did have better heroes, then I think that Optic Gaming with that strategy would have been able to win in game two. And this is actually one of the heroes that I wanted to talk about in the last game when uh, the, the Ogre got picked, where I feel like for some teams that have been having better results, this guy has made the difference because he's that damage amplification that Ten you need, particularly against the Tiny. Uh, and granted, they're not playing against the Tiny. They still could be if Optic wanted to take it. Five um, seconds but I, I was wondering if Optic maybe wanted to go for it themselves. Instead, they're going back to what worked earlier, and that's the Ancient Apparition. Um, but I really love this Witch Doctor pick for Animal Plan. I feel like this support is so freaking good right now. Yeah, a little bit of it will be mitigated by the Ice Blast, so healing... Ward won't be that effective, but yeah, our voodoo restoration, but yeah, it's not really <laughs> that big of a deal. Witch Doctor is, as you said, all about the Maledict and the cask, and he probably won't be able to get very many death wards off this game, as already with the two supports shown, they have three Dying. ways of being able to disable that. Pugna. And now with a Pugna, maybe he won't even be interested in standing in one place for a long time as Optic Gaming go for the life drain machine. Mm. Strip Which I, I'm assuming they typically give it to CCNC, but I'm not 100% sure. We Ten have seen a lot of offlane Pugna, so maybe it could be Zai. Eh, there's a possibility. Um, I don't know if it. Oh, great. Well, Optic have not picked Pugna in the past month, so it could be either. <laughs> it always happens like that, isn't it? You like think, yeah, all right, I'm going to go check. I, I'm going to know all the stats. And it's like, oh, because there was all this downtime. This. Yeah. It's like, it's. It, there's these waves of qualifiers and then there's a wave of tournaments and then all the teams that didn't make it to the tournaments like don't have any there's no no resources to refer to about what heroes they've been playing and so yeah we'll see where this pugna goes i mean either way the hero is still very very strong in either land yeah, and it's pretty i think good against the, the the like the ward is pretty good against puck uh sand king i think it's decent against two because i feel like i remember something about like epicenter when it's casted near a, a healing ward, you can break the blink dagger. Yeah, the nether ward will damage uh, Sand King as long as he's in the 1600 radius of the nether ward. And so it does make it a little bit tricky, but usually the epicenter channel is long enough that you only miss like one or two pulses before you get your blink off. Got it. Faceless Void Coming taken. Faceless Void. They uh, played against this the other day when they're playing against VGJ Storm. Um, and it was played in Ten the carry roll that remain. game by BSJ. Uh, it didn't look particularly Five amazing, but I think remaining. part of that was because the main heroes that they had to, like, combo together with it was an Ice Blast, and then it all was predicated upon Void hitting the Chronosphere. Uh, in this game, you got Sand King to sort of make some action happen beforehand and create chaos, and then Faces Void comes in at the last thing, and it's just like, bam! I'm gonna take you all out now. 
Yeah, and it gives Witch Doctor uh, more confidence in being able to get a Death Ward, and like you said, Faceless Void, and especially in the one position, is very dependent on combo potential, and so I guess, you know, you start out with the Dream Coil, and then buy some time for Sand King to, like you said, cause chaos in the back lines, and then Faceless Void rolls in with the Chronosphere and Witch Doctor to put Death Ward damage into it, but I have not seen too much success with Faceless Void recently. A lot of people are kind of struggling how to build him. I've even seen like a slight resurgence in Battle Fury at times. Lincoln's is still usually the number one choice, but this game there are a lot of ways to pop through the Lincoln's, especially if Pugna manages to get an Aghanim Scepter. And so it's uh... I, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see We'll see how they play it, because if they give it to Ritsu, then like Faceless Void is not a hero that can be very effective when he doesn't have very much farm. Like Tiny can be very effective because a lot of his usefulness comes from Grow, which is just experience, it's not really farm. But Faceless Void, he needs damage, and he needs to have HP, otherwise he's going to go down Five to like a life train within the span of one Geomagnetic Group Silence. And now he needs to actually find a way to kill Wraith King twice. Uh, which right. is not super great. Uh, you can conceivably go for like the Manta diffusal Manta, route, but, yeah. Um, he like he would eventually just go for the the Mana Drain, or rather the reincarnation doesn't cost Ten any dirt mana. Remaining. Um, right. I don't know. What do you, do you like the Wraith King pick here? How do you, how do you feel about the hero as a whole? Remaining. It's a very irritating draft that Optic have to go up against because like. These heroes are so difficult to kill. Wraith King inherently, like you said, because of reincarnation. But Pugna, so many times we've seen teams overcommit to kill Pugnas, but he's really fast. Decrepify makes life difficult in terms of getting any damage on the hero. And Life Drain can, like, in a snap, suddenly turn around a gank attempt. Right. And so they, they have to kill, like, four heroes between these two cores because Pugna can theoretically get a ton of HP back and Wraithing will get a second life and that's assuming that Pugna isn't even like defensively life draining him and stuff like that so I Radiant think that Animal Planet have enough burst damage to do it but I do like the Wraith King pick because it just it's so much sponginess that Animal Planet will have to pour damage into yeah it seems like it's it's uh the only thing is like do does Optic force you to pay attention to him like if they shut him down early enough that's always my worry true um, these days though i think one of the remaining. favorite builds for wraith king is armlet first chances are that i mean sorry not armlet first Shadow radiance first Finn. armlet first is more often than not seen in competitive play but if the uh support combination of ppd and 33 spend a lot of time protecting this wraith king which again they go for ccnc shadow fane and i like I wish that they Ten gave a more remaining. secure mid laner, but maybe C since he likes the matchup against Puck, Five we'll see. Remaining. But regardless, like I agree that Wraith King is going to need be need to be given high farm priority, otherwise Animal Planet won't really care about killing him. They'll just leave him for last after they finish off the SF and Pugna instead. So we've got a very green versus purple team here. It's the green wall, son! I know. I, I mean I yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna leave that one out there, but yeah, it's a, the green versus the purple. I want to see if Animal Planet are gonna continue this. Slaughter, this theme. let's go. I mean, I I think that that would be bad, but I, I could be down yeah, with it, maybe. Maybe. Cool. Um. Bane was already banned. What a damn shame. I know that would have been the real dream. Uh, I think uh, you could run Sand King off lane though. Give him a ton of farm. How we did play it, and I. Didn't love it like the two four O build, but it looks like they're going to be running instead with a Ritz. Oh, it's offline puck. Okay. Okay, so yeah, mid Phantom Lancer against CC and C. Yeah, like I said, there's not much data to go off of just because Animal Planet played puck mid one time. I guess doesn't mean that they're always going to go for it, and they instead send Phantom Lancer mid. And so if CC and C was expecting a puck matchup, then this just threw a big wrench in the plans, because yet again, Optic are going to have to worry about a lot of lanes. It is going to be an offlane Pugna, and so you're not going to have to be too concerned about it, because Faceless Void can't really do much against a Pugna. So at least this time, Zai will be safe in his own lane. But it's never really been about Zai's lane. It's been about PyCat's lane and CCNC's lane, and kind of the same symptoms of, as what we saw in the previous game, although this time Animal Planets aren't as intimidating. Like, they still have better lanes, 
but it's not like Zai's gonna have to rotate around like Pugna like he did in, as a Nature's Prophet in the previous game. So a better draft, I, I am not a fan of why they keep going for SF, but maybe they'll maybe be able to work it. Maybe they'll be able to make it work in this game. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking that PyCat might be able to carry Optic here. That my, that's my personal thought. Um, just because I, I agree with you, I have my concerns about CC and C playing this very uh, you know, gankable hero and, and a yeah. squishy one. But I'm trying to figure out how they kill this Wraith King twice, and it feels like they're going to need, you know, a coil and a death ward to kill him at least once, most likely. Like, you need so many different things to be thrown at him. If he builds tanky, um, I just don't see that guy dying unless everybody else on his team is dead, which could happen. It's a possibility. That, and I guess you do have two potential defusal builders as they do go for the Phantom Lancer. They're like, I thought yeah. if you want to pick the PL, pick that as your one position. But maybe they were initially thinking about sending Puck mid. Then they see this SF and they're like, well, we have 10th pick. Maybe we should just worry about getting a better mid lane matchup. And so they go for the PL. It's a, it's a good best of both worlds. It's a good matchup against SF. And it's a good core to send up against Wraith King. Um... Worth noting, there's a little bit of uh, extracurricular activities going on in the chat room before the game, or the lobby, rather. Uh, I think that Optic were very much wanting to get the, the show on the road. They're actually playing... It's, it's uh, a long day of Dota for them, to yeah. say the least. Animal Planet uh, and Optic are, I think, going to play again immediately after this in the ESL qualifiers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so PGL, I think. PGL? I think okay. P yeah. Um, somebody has ESL qualifiers that they're also going to be playing. Yeah. Um, basically, they're they're playing each other twice, and then they each, I think, separately have another game that they need to play, um, which is why PPD is is throwing out the sailing. You know? He's a busy man. He's got Dota to play. He's got awards to buy. Oh, this is the, the, the European smiley. Oh, oh man, PyCat with the... Oh, man. See, this see, is an see. arms race. Mine's bigger. What do you think now? <laughs> oh, God. PyCat is uh, coming in the clutch. This man came to play. Who Who is missing it? Because it seems like everyone is shitposting in chat right now. It's true. It's very true. Um. Uh, and then these are all tactics to try and throw them off and get them all freaked out beforehand. Oh god. I Is feel like CC might just like want to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> he seems really upset. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Or rather, uh, what did I say? Not CC and C, PPD, that's what I mean. That's just par for the course. Yeah, it's true. Let's take a look at items. Um, He's got a hot pocket to warm up. You see, there you go. He's, he's Superman. He's so angry. I don't know what Ritsu's saying. Maybe right. he wants to play for Immortals. That's a possibility. He's got all this Korean text. How is MSS doing, by the way? I know Immortals just had another series right now, but did you see one from yesterday, or was that were you casting something else? Um, I was casting them, and they looked pretty good. I liked them. Uh, I felt okay. like it was... Um, there, there were moments where it didn't look super clean. It, it was just classic Immortals Dota, right? Like, run at each other over and over that, and over. That and over. was my question. I wanted to see how MSS adapted to that, because I I don't really think I've billed MSS as being a particularly aggressive player these days, but I did see a few pubs, and he has been playing very aggressively, so maybe it's like immersion therapy. It's and like, so if it's working out, that's good. I mean, you're sort of asking, like, how do you adjust to a tidal wave? You just you go right. with it, right? It's it's gonna take you up and carry you through it, um, whether Very or not true. you want it or not. Yes. Yeah, there's all this new blood in NA. That's why I'm I'm enjoying what I'm seeing from Animal Planet right now. Bryle and Kitrak, new introductions to the professional scene. We'll see how they fare, and so that's good. We'll see how uh, 33 has been gelling with the rest of Optic Gaming. I mean, he's played Earth Spirit what like all three games, right? Yeah, I think so. So if he was hoping for hero versatility, that's not going to happen with PPD drafting. He's that been, man, he I knows mean, what he likes. And he's been like, he's 
it's been doing a good job on it too. That's the, the other thing. Begins. Yes. Um, a really, really solid job. Looks like PyCat and PPD are gonna try and dissuade Moon Meander from going forward and stealing the creep wave, which is very nice. On the other side though, it's Zai who's trying to also make that happen. Not gonna happen though. They're they're denying it out. So we haven't actually seen the pull in the off lane as much as it's been there before. That was because this time both supports actually went to the safe lane, which is absolutely incredible. You never see it happen. There are only there are only four heroes in the mid lane. Unprecedented. I know. It's a brand new world, new meta. <laughs> both range creeps go down, so yeah, things are very static. The one advantage is that Optic has the one ranged hero out of these three other melee heroes, so CCNC is going to be able to hopefully you know stay a little bit closer to experience range than he was in game two where he was just completely zoned out but this time he's already got one soul so it's much more cheerful for this shadow fan this time around moon getting that harassment in it feels like this is definitely where the battles are going to be once the levels start to get up a little bit more um, oh man he's going to need to oh deliver close oh he got a salve oh salve out. canceled that's uh, frustrating. And in the top side lane, Zai is a very fast hero, and so I'm not really too concerned about him dying. He does go for the Decrepified level 2, which usually when you're in these side lane offlane situations, if you level up Nether Ward early on, you're just asking to get harassed more. So he's going to be sticking to Nether Blast and Decrepify for the most part. More trades. Ritsu going to walk forward. Look for a bash just to find it. 10% obviously. And yeah, Kitrax just gonna try and get into a position to steal away this bounty rune uh, from Zai. And realizing that it could be a little bit too scary to get back out. It was also the Invis rune picked up by Aoi in spite of the kick used by Earth Spirit. And this is where things could maybe get a little bit scary for CCSD. to beware. Yeah, with 33 having a kick, I don't really think SF is too concerned. CS I, I, looking like it's I hope that good. this game Ritsu spends more time farming as now we do get that Indus Bro strike onto two heroes and CCNC gets kicked away. Really well done there by 3-3. Three, three. They keep on wanting to call him Miha. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I guess I can see it, but... Yeah. I have seen plenty of chat being like, what, we hot joined Optic? Much as how whenever anyone would watch the Southeast Asian Miracle, people would be like, Miracle left Liquid for this? Of course. Unless they were winning. Unless they were winning. AUI has left the mid lane. Die. Now heading to the bot lane. Maybe gonna get bashed. That's a decrep there. That will be a walk away. As you said, Owie here. Gonna get some caustic action. Oh, oh we forgot to pay attention to whenever AUI and Zai, I mean AUI and PPD are killing each other. That's how point. how are we going to illustrate a story? That's a good point. Gotta get a step up our uh, commentary here. Hi. All right, level well, we'll analysis. see what happens now. Starcross lovers, Burrow striking away in 33, not gonna land a roll. We still have another kick if they want to use it. They're thinking about it. Moon's here as well, and. Slow him down. There's going to be the right clicks. First blood drawn by 3 3. As I cat. So uh, give a little bit of punches here on a kit track. Cask is not going to bounce. Moon forced away from his lane. But we'll be able to pick up a bounty rune here, I believe, as he uses the orb. And now going to even oh. chase further for this. Takes it away. Good decision by BPD to back out there. I'm telling you, bounty runes are so heavily contested. Actually, 33 doesn't even go for that bounty rune. What? I uh, completely just poked a hole in my theory. I mean, maybe he's worried about somebody being up there. Uh, Witch uh, Doctor has been away for a little while, and Maledict, pretty quick kill, I think, if it's on him. Double damage. Yeah, unlike last game, these supports can afford to leave the mid lane. Uh, SF is not too concerned, generally, uh, by PL, but now with double damage rune, Right, it could happen. Good doppelganger away by Bryle, and that should be enough to save his life, but they do end up losing Sand King. Still very much worth it. Yeah, Bryle gets the kill on CCNC, and CCNC doesn't get any of the experience from the Sand King going down, so... 
Phantom Lance is very happy with how that turned out. Again, trading hits here with Zai. He has a time dilation if he wants to use it. The chase is there. They do catch eyes onto him now. Cash is going to connect and uh, trying to turn it. There's the time dilation for the slow. Now in some trouble as he's going to end up getting punched down. I think Zai is dead. I had hope. Well played by Ritsu. It's not often that you get time dilation early on, but you know that Pugna is, you know, he's going to be spending cooldowns if he starts getting into the danger zone, and so cooldowns are spent. Meanwhile, CCNC on the mid lane taking a lot of damage here. Oh, it's raindrop back raindrop. up again, but still taking damage. Looks like he's going to live through it. Got two raindrop procs there. It's down bottom, they're able to kill off the puck with the two hero rotation. Yeah, one of the things that uh, is a slight trend difference for Phantom Lancer is we were seeing a higher priority being put into Phantom Rush. And so this game specifically, Bryl is actually opting to put three points in Phantom Rush and only having one value point in Lance for the slow. This was uh, something that I actually saw... Oh, that's now Nether Blast on the Witch Doctor, but he's fine. Something I saw... Oh, man, never mind. Going for another kill on CCNC. Trying to get him, CCNC looking like he is going to fall there. Yeah, so he got that last rush. It was on an 8 second cooldown as opposed to the typical 16 second cooldown with just one point in it. And he got 22 Agi and all of his illusions get 22 Agi. And so sometimes you see the benefit in it. Being able to chase heroes Radiance at a much shorter cooldown is, is sometimes better than being able to nuke them with lance damage. Especially if you don't have the mana early on. And you see Bryle like, he doesn't have very much mana but he doesn't Radiance really care. He's diving CC and C under his own tower. They, they have been set up for so long also on this bottom lane. Oh, Chrono on the top lane, just straight up. I mean, like, this is the thing. Like, you, you have these two supports that have been sitting down here bottom trying to set up a kill on this puck for the past, like, 45 seconds or so. CC and C dies in the mid lane, and then they also are able to find a kill up top on Zai. The last couple minutes have been really rough so far for Optic. Though, again, like, I'm not too concerned. This is what I was saying that I thought Optic should do, is that let Ritsu have a good laning phase. It's okay if he manages to get some kills, get some farm, because more often than not, Moon Meander is the one who likes to play more aggressively and likes to go for more YOLO plays. And so if you're able to, you know, intimidate him early on, which that gank attempt didn't work on the Puck, and Puck is a very difficult hero to gank in general, but I, it'll be up to Ritsu to take advantage of the fact that he's been given this much space by Optic. I'll have to see if it ends up working out for him. Kit track gonna wrap around here, seeing if they can find themselves a pie cat. Mid lane. Again, Brile just spamming this out, burning through raindrops, and I'll take your again, 3-3 three, three PPD trying to set up here on the Brile. They're going to be able to find one raise, second raise as well. Doppelganger, he was able to dodge away from that one. Are they gonna be able to slow him down enough to find the kill? He's walking away and well, they're looking for that final raise. He's not quite there. They juke around the other side. They oh. miss, he's able to dodge away, but not known. Up and now Ritsu shows up trying to find a catch Dyer's here. You know, attack. Wraith King reincarnated as this three hero rotation is going as he approaches the shrine and he's not gonna trigger it on time, but he goes down. So they get the kill on the PL, but now maybe gonna lose more silence on the three. Owie may be able to turn, doesn't have the mana, but he does have the mana for the sandstorm. And now trying to run away from there, but they'll get. Radiance what? Okay. They hit the he was raise. trying to read. Yeah, he was trying to expect uh, AUI to roll out as now the kick comes out at the 11th hour to cancel that TP of Moon Meander. And CCNC gets two kills. Not much needed. That's been a rough series of events around leading up to that. Highcat, no reincarnation for a very long time. Powers. Yeah, he had to level it at six. You hate having to do that as a. Wraith King, you usually, you're sitting on that skill point forever, but he leveled it and he died twice. Usually you only end up leveling the reincarnation if you're able to, you know, guarantee that you're going to survive the second time because, you know, your team will recover, which, you know, they did end up getting a few kills and SF did end up getting some cleanup duty. So three quick kills in succession for CCNC as he also did get that kill in the mid lane. So he's doing fine. Looks like it is going to be that diffusal rush for the... Faceless Void. At least he has it queued up, so he could chill change his mind to paint up on how the next couple of minutes go. But they're inhabiting the top of the Radiant's net worth right now, with Puck only slightly behind the Pug. And the Tier 1 tower about to fall. As now we spot the side here. There's the, the Burrow Strike to roll away. They got the silence and. Dive damage. 
Close to a dead sand king? Lightning storm? Still ends up going down. Mid lane. CNC. Brought down low. They force the rotations. And I back out again. Yeah, Zai's managed to hit level 8 despite all that pressure. That's what I'm saying. Like early on, offlaners, they don't care about throwing a few lives away here and there. It's all about experience, is the name of the game. And so. If Zai is left alone, if Phantom Lancer wants to go, you know, gank with the Faceless Void, as now Ritsu has smoked up, has Zai's Chronosphere, but that means that his top tower is going to be very vulnerable with Zai and his soul ring. Yeah. Aoi's going to walk down. over there, top tower and as soon fallen. as Ritsu leaves the map, everybody backs out. PPD is yeah. probably going to be the one that ends up giving his life away for it. We'll Run see if it's going to be Chrono. Don't even oh, nice time have walk. Ritsu finds him in the trees, gets the kill, and now they can get the tier 1 tower ult. Time walks to close the path for AA, so no chrono having to be spent. So they still have it, and Kitrek is level 6 with his death ward, so ideally they find the shadow fan. If they get him, then for sure, between Maledic and death ward damage, the chronosphere is going to get a kill for sure. Gotta watch out for this though, because you have Magnetize on 3-3 as well as Zai. A lot of burst damage here. If they're not careful, they could still blow these heroes up as the jump board. Chrono nice. right on the edge of both of them. Beautiful play and no way to turn it around. That Shadow Fiend did. Magnetize this on everybody. Ryle combo together. Oh my god, that was beautiful. And they're going to go for a third kill. It's now PPD on the run. Range up, mitigates a little bit of it. He's going to go down. Now Pycat. Pycat's gone also. Just an unmitigated disaster. So it started with the beautiful cross from Ritsu, but also Bryle didn't get hit by that magnetized at all. Yeah, 33 was more interested in shutting down the Death Ward. So he was able to silence out the Death Ward, but... Shadowfiend was probably dead regardless, and at least he survived at the end of the chrono, but then Bryle was able to lance the SF at the end and finish him off, and so it, I, like, time and time again, Pycat keeps rolling into team fights like, after the fight has already ended, and that was just like another classic example of that, which now he has reincarnation up, but it's such a high cooldown at level 1, it's 200 seconds, and so all the way back from that shrine death till now, it wasn't up, and Pycat goes down, so all the cores of OG go down. The only man to survive was, I believe, Zai, and which is great, but you're gonna need more than that. Well, and like looking at this too, it was all of the Earth Spirit spells used, every single one of them, and he only did 297 damage. Yeah. Like that, it, I don't know. It's Radiance bottom good play by attack. Animal Planet there to dodge away from all of it and. Now mid lane. Not for you. Their tower is gone. They're going to be able to try and push for another one here as well. Animal Planet putting themselves in a good position early on with 3,000 gold lead. A lot of aggressive Radiant Vision now. There's a ward placed behind the mid tier one. And they did have a ward on the Radiant, I mean, Dire Ancients just a moment ago, but it timed out. Oh, wait, never mind. It's right there. And so they they don't want to sit back and wait. AA's got his ice blast up and running. They want to find some kill with some hero. But right now, Animal Planet are just sitting back right now. They are taking down this tower though rather rapidly. Aoi is here set up to try and push this out, but it looks like Animal Planet not really tripping. They're just gonna keep this going. I don't know about this. Feels like they could defend it if they wanted to, right? There's one more blast, and they have a glyph. AUI is just going to poke it down, but... Oh, they do glyph it. Okay. Huh. And Optic are like, wait, does that mean that they're coming? Or can we just kill it anyway? And they kill it anyway. Very strange. Yeah, it does feel like they could have defended that, but... Uh... Maybe their TPs were down? No, they all had the TP. I don't, I don't know why they didn't defend that. They had Chronosphere up also, so it's... Strange that they glyphed it and then didn't defend it, but I mean it is really scary tower. like peeking into a, when you know there's other heroes there that can attack, but I don't know. I suppose, but yet again, it's the issue that I mentioned for Optic in game two. There's no solid initiation from like there are no blink dagger initiators yet again. So even if you show up to defend a tower and you don't really have vision, like what's the worst that can happen? You get Earth Spirit silenced or something like that, but Wraith King doesn't have a blink dagger yet, and he's not going for a blink dagger. Where he went for the Midas instead. Radiance Maybe after Treads he'll go for Blink Dagger, but like you said, I think they need to build damage and make this Wraith King irritating. Otherwise, if he just has a Blink Dagger, he's not worth spending Dyer's the time to kill. 
Oh, Shadow Blade is going to be there for the Faceless Void. And I guess the other thing that you could say is, like, during that Dude, time, they farmed the... their entire jungle. Yeah, um, <laughs> as five heroes, though. You usually only want to have to spend one. Like, now Zai's chipping away at this mid-tier one. Yeah. Well, they're moving in to try and, and defend even, against it. Even if he dies, like, it's not that big of a deal. Smoke and Shadow Blade by Ritsu. They can get the Chrono on Zai, but they want to get more than that, but there is no more. And Optic are perfectly okay with that. They took a tier 2 up top, they've taken mid tier 1 to like a 10th HP. It's weird priority from Animal Planet to dedicate so many heroes to farming the enemy jungle. So, next couple minutes as they look like Aoi is going to try and pressure out this lane. He's maybe trying to bait them into a bad situation. They do roll forward onto Aoi. The stun is there. Ritsu walking forward, though. Chrono connects onto all of them. And it's going to be a good bit of damage if they can follow it up in time. Moon catches one. They're able to find themselves a second. And Pycat, a lot of trouble. That might have managed to go off. But he is going to be dead a second time here, most likely. As they are slowly whittling him down. And the Burrow Strike comes. They get that kill. Also, Kitrak was able to uh, find a kill on a CCNC. Where did he die? What the hell? Lane. Oh. Shout out to the Death Ward. Yeah. Wow. Animal Planet. Dyer's when they make moves, they make them good. Attack. Yeah, Zai. Will, in the meantime, take a tier one. Dyer's so Zai doing Zai things, but a lot of damage dealt overall to Dyer's Optic Enemies now. Face shift to dodge the Ice Blast. Coconut comes through, is barely gonna hit there onto him with the Maledict. It looks like he is probably going to well, take some extra damage from it. He might live. Witch Doctor goes down, Moon Meander trying to make something happen here against BBD. Can't quite find the kill. The jump board, Ritsu slowing them all down. Well, the get away from them for the moment is High Cat wants to hit the stun to blink away, but staying on the high ground. Not bad at all. Another he chase, three, three, three silence. Trying to run, need to get out of there. They don't have anything else left in the tank. Radiance top tower is under yeah, attack. Yeah, Chronosphere was spent on the top lane, so not available quite yet, but this is the kind of movement that I was expecting a few minutes ago from Animal Planet before they started giving up all those towers, but better late than never, as they do proceed to get a handful of kills on core heroes all over the map. Wraithling goes down to top lane, Shadow King went down in bot lane, and Pugna goes down to mid lane. God, and it's just such a pronounced lead now. 6,000 gold leads, moving down towards that 7,000 mark, almost 10,000 experience. Uh, the plus side is that Pycat has a Midas, like you're gonna be able to maybe in the future start to catch back up a little bit more and their heroes do scale quite well. I'm just a little bit worried about these next 10 minutes if this lead doesn't just keep growing. Yeah, and since Ritsu is actually not opting for that initial Diffuse the Blade that we saw in his quick buy, uh, he's gone for the Shadow Blade, and he is in fact going for a Battle Fury, or he had a Battle Fury queued up, now he has a BKB queued up. Uh, I'm sure he will probably change that again as time progresses, but it's not the Diffuse Manta build, and so it gives Wraith King a better avenue back into this game, because the only mana burn that he has to be concerned about is coming from the Phantom Lancer, and Phantom Lancer can't attack in a Chronosphere anyway, so... It is, it, it is going to be very reliant on Pycat. They've been laying down sentries all over the dang place as well. Just wanting to not get found by that Shadow Blade initiation. It's so devastating. Is he going to move for another move there into the mid lane? Optic just having to play scared. It is still them sort of dodging these ganks though and getting the farm that they kind of need. Top lane, high cap pushing. Radiance middle tower. Mid lane, under attack. tower under slight assault. Animal Planet keep expecting Optic Gaming to be grouping up, cause like every single time Chrono is available, then Animal Planet are just like always as four or five heroes. But Optic can spread the map out, like farm the enemy jungle, go push out side lanes. As long as you're not grouped up for a team fight, the worst that'll happen is you'll lose one hero here and there. But if you all group up as five to defend a tier two, then you might all get chronoed and you might get five man wiped. So Optic Gaming are spreading out the map pretty well. And now Dreamcoil spent on PPD. PPD doesn't, and Death Ward, wow. Okay. Now, I mean, this is always the worry that we sort of had for Optic, right? Like, where is their damage really? They need that Ice Blast, they need all of Earth Spirit's hit to actually deal the Bot damage. Lane. And bottom AUI. Lane, it is going to be him just 
walking away for the moment, but Marae is going to... Another blast is going to be the death of him. Walking forward, Ritsu wanting oh. to find that kill. He's thinking about it. Just going to take down the wards instead. The rest of his team isn't around, so no cone of availability. I, like, yeah, there is no damage coming out, but, like, I'm still not really concerned about the future for Optic, because... Animal Planet aren't stopping them from farming. They're taking objectives. They've managed to whittle Optic down to just two outer towers remaining, as that mid tier two did remain up, but it's getting pretty low. And they just have a one tower advantage Double against uh, Optic Gaming right now. And so, even though it's a six K net worth advantage, you know they're up seventeen to nine kills. Their experience advantage is nearly the same as their net worth advantage. Optic Gaming are still like not shut out. They're finding what they need to get done. And even in terms of like aggressive vision, like Animal Planet have spent so much time on the Radiant half of the map, but they only have one ward in the Radiant jungle, and that's it. Yeah. Well, Moon's gonna run into PPD here, and... <laughs> okay. That was the smoke. Uh, and it looks like he is Kit going track to get away. On the nope, top there lane. Bro struck is dead. Oh, find the kill on the Kit track as well. Ooh, Chrono. Chase, got him, right on the edge. Moon gonna send over his three orb to the side as well. Disarmed for the moment, but he is very much dead. Incarnation is there, though. Owie in the area. He's assigned to split up and try and go for the Pugna, but the four staff away and able to make his retreat. So they get away on one, they get away on two. Pycat, no TP, but he did at least buy his relic. As he's gonna take them for a little walk. Oh, Ritsu gets a mega kill. Chrono was spent as well as Dream Coil, but Dream Coil is not really that big of a cooldown spent. But I, I'm surprised that Bryl wasn't able to participate in that fight earlier on. But I mean, in the end, you ended up killing the Wraith King twice. Optic Gaming yet again was not really interested in fighting it because. What's the worst that can happen? You'll lose the Wraith King, but Zai manages to get out. Whereas if you send CC and T CCNC into the fight, then things may get a lot worse. So Optic Gaming are staying on the edge of all these fights that you only need to su suffer minimal casualties. On the animal planet now. Got himself a haste rune on Moon Meander. Scanning. Try and... Okay. Go for another pickoff here. He <laughs> PPD is Moon. He's, he's got you in your sights. He's going to be able to take down PPD here, it looks like. And Tank in the gank. Not really anything that his allies can do to help him out that much. SF was long gone. It was just a scan out into the wild. Puck was hoping to find CCNC. Instead, found an ancient apparition. And CCNC quietly clawing his way back up to the to uh, top of his team's net worth. Has a BKB completed now. That is a pretty big uh, one, but I, I still feel like with this Chronosphere here, it's a scary state of affairs. Ten seconds on cooldown. To watch and wait and see if he gets caught out. By this rotation. Ritsu, they spot him. Oh, God. Ice Blast. It's going yeah, it's like somewhere. Okay. I mean, I mean they saw the CCC. Are they wanting to go for somebody else? Just push him. They know Chronosphere is up, so might as well only send one hero vulnerable. It's going to be Zai. We'll see if Zai can get out of this with the four stuff. And he is. Whoa. And we knew. He knew. Nice. <laughs> nice. Animal Planet's movements feel, like, feel so predictable. Like, obviously, from our perspective, it seems predictable, but... Basically, if Chrono's on cooldown, you'll see Animal Planet on the map. If Chrono's available, then Animal Planet are nowhere to be seen. Because Faceless Void by himself does not deal enough damage. Ritsu ended up going for the Midas out of all the choices, before the BKB, before the Diffusal, before whatever else, the Battle Fury. And, oh, now Bryl gets spotted out. Last coming through, he's in trouble, gonna drop. Get the kill. Yeah, it's not often that a team will ward their own Ancients, but... This Radiant Ward spots out the Phantom Lancer farming. Could be a slow decline, maybe starting here. Shadow Blade Midas for him, as you mentioned. They have a gem on Moon, though, so they're going to try and clear out all these wards that have 
been really, I think, the thing that's been keeping Optic in there. Like you said, it's the movement around the map that Optic have been doing to dodge ganks, and then also the warding, making sure that they've constantly got vision around these areas. And they have, and it's helped, but uh, again, like, it, it's, it seems to be more timing dependent. Like, Animal Planet are not, as they do eventually counter ward that, because they're like, how the hell did they know that Phantom Lancer was farming the Ancients? It's... This is the kind of movement that they need to capitalize on. Is now Moon Meander going in kind of solo. He's just but trying to clear the three plays. Or the other. Oh my god, Ritsu! Fight. He sees oh, them! Man. He caught them all! Oh, the Rift Doctor! Old deep plays oh, no. inside the Chrono! It's not quite enough! Is he going to be able to bring them all down? Eventually, the answer is yes, but they've already lost the Sand King and that Faceless Void. Oh, it meant to be so much more, but they couldn't kill him off in time, but now Bryle showed up. No more BKB left for you to see trying to run away, but we'll be slowed and we'll eventually be killed. And these coconuts, they're bouncing back and forth. And the baby be able to find themselves another phantom rushing from the other side. And it was all set up by a beautiful chronosphere from Mr. Ritsu. Hit track, gotta have a little bit of a talk about that placement, but everything else was gorgeous. It was, but if Optic Gaming cut their loss, I mean, it wasn't even cut their losses. They could have called it quits after they managed to kill off the Faceless Void in the same thing. But like you said, SF's BKB was down, and he continued moving forward. Phantom Lancer was not in that fight, and so as, as soon as Phantom Lancer came back into the fight, they were like, wait, you know, Reincarnation is down, my BKB on SF is down, we can't stick around. And unfortunately, the cast ends up bouncing all the way from the SF, and then, like, heads into the mid lane, finds the Wraith King, and then bounces down to PPD, and so... It was the worst case scenario for Optic in terms of exiting that fight, but it could have gone better if they called it quits after getting the Ritsu and AUI kill. Yeah. And now, it wasn't significant damage dealt to the towers, really. You got this one down to about two-thirds HP. Um, Roshan not able to take it yet. And it looks like, for now, Animal Planet is going to be content to farm up in their next set of items. I mean... The scary thing is that Bryle still has a lot of room to grow. He's going to buy that Reaver right now and is trying to get towards a heart, which could make the somewhat lack of damage from Optic even more scary. I guess that they're still always going to have Ice Blast. Um, but I don't know. They have Ice Blast. They have Decrep. They're going to have, uh, hopefully, a no reincarnation mana cost on Pycat eventually because he did go for that Midas and he's got his Radiance completed. So... He's progressing to that level 20 fairly quickly. And, you, like, Phantom Lancer does have a lot of room to grow, but so does the Wraith King. The Wraith yeah. King is only just getting started. And so, like, if Wraith King, I would imagine, oh, probably no. go for a Mjolnir Ooh. for stuff. Uh, Blink, actually, yeah, but his. Oh, <laughs> Blink. CNC had a pucker moment right there. Well, Chrono's up, and Optic are like, let's, let's not show ourselves anywhere. Yeah. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. And Pycat, like you said, lots of room to grow. With that Radiance going, he is going to start to accelerate his farm significantly faster. So it looks like Ritsu is again going to be trying to find an opening here. Zai. They are able to find the kill oh, on the Oh man, Zai can get this Chrono. Oh, uh, they got Pretty Zai, good. but they don't get a Pycat. Trying to kill them other two off. Oh, strike gets there. There's going to be an Ice Blast going in as well. Connects on to two. The chase is coming. The stun is there, but they had the bash. On a 3-3, so Chronosphere only nets them the kill on the Zai and 3-3. Yeah, and 3-3 almost gave up the jig for the Wraith King. He rolled away, and then he was just like, oh god, I rolled right into my Wraith King. He was trying to escape, so 3-3 ran back inwards to make sure that they wouldn't find the Wraith King, and it saves Pycat's life, and so, again, minimal casualties by OG, or Optic. I keep wanting to call them OG. I mean, they are OG, that. right? I know, <laughs> but you can't do that. Fair enough. Now, Ritz has been playing his heart out. Really impressed with his uh, his movement, this game. Like, he only has died one time. I think that was maybe during the leaning stage or close to it. I'm not sure. Yeah, Ritz is doing a good job, but I just wish that they didn't have to send, like, four heroes with him every single time Chrono's up. Like, him plus one can do a lot of damage. Like, they don't need to go for these huge three-man, four-man Chronos. It's great that Ritz is landing them, but it's... 
a lot of wasted potential from what should be a very, very solid pickoff squad. You've got Sand King, you've got Puck, you've got Faceless Void with Chrono. Oh man, as he just barely got a initiation. So, like, you'd think that Chrono Suru would be being spent on more pickoff oriented stuff, but it's seeming to be pretty much exclusively team fight, which now at least Chronosphere is maxed out, so. 110 yeah. second cooldown, it's going to be up extremely frequently, so even if you do go for teamfight stuff, you can still use it in pickoff situations as well. Well, yeah, and that time lock damage talent that he went for also, it's, I think, somewhat underrated. Uh, I've tended to see a lot more of the voids go for the 300 health, so I'm really happy to see him take that one in this instance, because it does feel like now if they want to, they can play more of that, that pickoff style, but it looks like another smoke is going to come now. Maybe? No? Not smoke? I'm just walking around. Uh, but they're going to be heading over this direction. Pycat gets the Legion room, so he can start playing Naga Siren. <laughs> With Roche still up, there's a chance that might start to see these teams jockey for position. Yeah, Radiant has vision from this cliff ward. Dire's vision is about to time out. But we'll see how quickly they can do this and if they can do it without Radiant suspecting anything. They all smoked in, and they have a solar press, so it's fairly quick. Yeah. I think that PL has become a much better Rocher than previously. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, Especially yeah. if you, I mean, if you click on Roche, you can see the cooldown for the slam. So you can just doppelgang every single time he slams and predict it, so you don't even take that much damage. And very well done by Animal Plant, sneaking that Roche in. Yep. Make it work. Roche is there. And of course, like you want to save your ice blast because you need it for the fight, but simultaneously you need like another way to check to see if Roche is being done. I, I do think that they should have ice blasted it. I, I I don't think PPD expected it. It's because the way Animal Planet keeps playing is like, oh, Chrono's up. Watch out for team fight. And so most of the times you would expect, okay, well, you know, I gotta save this ice blast for a Chrono initiation, but. Instead, Animal Planet were like, well, we don't need to get any picks. We can just take the Roche without forcing a fight at all. And so PPD didn't expect that there would be that initiation. PyCat didn't expect it. He had picked up that illusion rune. Like, maybe you could dedicate one illusion to sitting inside of the pit. But Animal Planet pull a fast one. Smoke goes out. Moon kills off the creep wave. Going to back out now. And like we were talking about, the heart's done for PL. He can start working towards that butterfly. EPD <laughs> pretty much looking the same as he was last game with just the Tranquil Boots. But he's gotten 14 levels. Like, it's not yeah. completely terrible. That's the most important thing, yeah. being able to put more points in Ice Plus, which he's a long ways away from 18, but 1-1 one, one team fight is now. Ritsu tries to find him. God, over and over again, they've been finding the kill onto this guy. And just with no defensive Death items, auto. it's free pickings every time. As long as it's a support hero, Optic hero, uh, Optic are not concerned. It's now people. So I will TP out. Continuing, like it, it's a 7k net worth advantage for Animal Planet, and they have the Aegis. But Optic are doing such a good job at making sure that it doesn't feel like that. Bottom lane, the two. These two heroes. Oh, they scan them. The decision there, the BKB, and then the runaway. Certainly don't wow. want to have to use that for that, but I'll dig that. Gets what a away. scan! That's crazy. I have no idea how they knew that he was there. I wonder if, like, maybe they saw him run over this direction with the. Th that's board. what I thought, but I thought he was coming from the south, and so he was like leaving. I mean, I guess maybe this sentry ward may have caught him on the edge, mm. but whatever the case, force out a 10 second BKB. Maybe rotate over to the top lane if they want to. It looks like it's going to be Optic that are moving out and trying to trying to catch. They do manage to get Owie in. One kill pickup. Now Optic gaining a little bit more of their own ground. This game is a catalog of support deaths over and over again. Is under attack. Was that the uh, no, that was Kitrax gem? Oh. I think it was at least. I'm not seeing another gem on. Animal points. That's pretty big. They get the that jump is carrier. Big. Yeah, actually. Under attack. Mid lane. Trial is going to keep pushing this out, trying to force some people back as wrap round is coming. They've got Pycat in their sights. Meanwhile, on the other side, they've been able to catch Zai. He's dropping low. They still don't have both of these heroes from Shocked Ultimate used a little bit. 
Oh, Ritsu. It hurts to see that, but they are still going to be able to find two. So PPD and Zai go down. Chrono is down. They might actually not have realized that, though, because it was outside of their vision, I think. That's possible, actually. Yeah. Not that it would matter. You play the same against an Aegis that you would against a Chrono that's available, so... Right. Until this Aegis times out, which should be fairly soon, Optic Gaming are going to continue to stick around and make sure that they don't get too far overextended. And despite like almost never being on the map, CCNC has managed to hit level 2, completed the Shivas after going for the BKB, which is a pretty solid option against a Phantom Lancer and a Faces Boy, both for the attack speed slow and the armor. Although now... Uh, BKB pop, turn around, trying to get out of there. Silence on the two of them, not bad. The Mantis Isle, though, to get away. Owie, trying to oh, escape with this mana. gem. They end up losing Pycat. Oh my goodness. Uh, with these heroes down, things have become a problem. He has buyback, which he's probably going to spend as soon as Zai respawns. Yeah, I think they need to, because, well, maybe they decide to give up a lane of Rax, but it will definitely be a lane of Rax if he doesn't buy back. You know, I I don't think they knew that Ritsu spent the Chrono, because, like, they're playing like Chrono's up. Sun coming through, Ice Blast down as well, they're looking forward, and the buyback comes from Pycat now. KP is out from Ritsu, but they're starting to bring down CCNDs, and a lot of trouble is going to end up dying. No buyback for him. So they lose the Witch Doctor in exchange for the Shadow Fiend and the Earth Spirit. They don't lose the Rax as of yet, but with this heart on Bryo and the Aegis still in hand, they can go for this. All right, Aegis is down, maybe a bit too scary. Chrono back up in two seconds. Yeah, Chrono's up. Dream Coil will be down, but if they you also find have, the Wraith King... They have the Time Walk cast range also. He's going to go for it. Jumps in, finds two, and they've also got the Wraith King on the outside of the Chronosphere. They can barely hit him. There's going to be the Blast coming through, but it's not nearly enough. Animal Planet potentially going to be able to take two lanes of barracks now. Maybe even the game. That was a beautiful chrono. Like you said, Wraith King was caught on the edge. Yet again, he had reincarnation off cooldown, but Phantom Lancer was just able to pound into him with all these illusions defuse ablating him. Again, no mana for the chrono. And I do think that, I mean, like, there, there's still a tier 2 remaining, and, you know, it's an elimination game. And plus, you know, they're gonna play another series, so PPD is gonna make them bleed, but I... I don't think it's easy for Optic Gaming to come back from this one, to say the least. The other thing is, like, Wraith King only a couple of hundred experience away from I know, getting that so level close 20. To 20. Uh, feels bad. Definitely. Radiance top so, five. what Some was attack. just recently a uh, sub 1000 net worth lead has now skyrocketed to 21,000 over the past couple of minutes. That's all it takes is. One fight, a couple buybacks. Radiance top shrine. Go from bad to worse to terrible. Yeah, and Aegis wasn't even like legitimately claimed; it just timed out. So the ways of dealing with this faceless void are so difficult for Optic because they don't have initiators. This is the second time, and maybe even in game one they didn't have any initiators. But PPD just is not interested in drafting Blink Dagger carriers, and so Animal Planet have taken advantage of it in both game two and now in game three because. You know, it's always Ritsu, or, I mean, uh, game two they had a lot of initiators, and game three we see the attack. potential from the Sand King, the Puck, and the Faceless Void all can very easily start a fight, and Time very safely money. start a fight, too. Yeah. Definitely. And, again, it's like, how do you try and stick onto these heroes that are so mobile and actually just maintain damage onto him. I was hoping that the Puck was going to go for the Dream Coil Rapid Fire, but Puck's playing it the most likely correct way. I mean, 174 damage, Dagon is an int item, so yeah. you get a lot of right-click out of it, but probably not quite as good as the 420 GPM. Oh, now the slow, slow death is going to continue as the tier 2 tower is gone. Roche may respawn in 12 seconds. And again, elimination match, as you mentioned. Optic going to stay in it for all they're worth, but it is feeling mighty difficult to come back from this one. There are ways to back in. It's just, it's difficult also given the itemization. Like, Zai has gone for a BKB as opposed to the Aghanim Scepter, which I can understand, but you 
aren't really going to be able to be like, uh, oh my god, this Pugna is suddenly killing everyone with a BKB. You're just going to be able to kill one target at most. At least you'll be able to get the full life drain off. And so, you know, if it's Void inside of his Chrono, maybe you can shut that down. But there are four heroes that you need to be concerned about on Animal Planet. The Phantom Lancer is so tanky with the heart and now butterfly evasion on top of that. Puck is very, very mobile with the blink dagger, face shift, and Yules, and a Lincoln's to make sure that any single target initiation won't work, and the Faceless Void has an Aghanim Scepter completed, so chrono initiation every 60 seconds, so you can't even reliably disengage from fights. Hmm. That one is a little bit odd, though. I mean, it's, you know, great to have the chrono and stuff, but... Uh, I always feel like the Ags can sometimes be a little bit tough if you can't like, build this. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. Like, as you said, they've got so much other damage. Basically, the Puck has become just a monster like to deal with. If in a worst case scenario, you could literally just pop the Chrono to attack towers, right. and there's nothing that Optic can do about it. Yeah. I've parked their courier over Roche, which we'll see it respawn in a minute and a half about. But they're just gonna twiddle their thumbs in the meantime while Optic I actually find the puck in the bot lane. Me? What in the hell are what? just moon things. I mean it was probably it was probably a smoke initiation, I imagine. Homie was just trying to split push, but he does lose the gem. It's a thousand gold, it's gonna take him like Oh, a solid minutes. two and a half minutes yeah. to get that back. I mean, that's if they could do something in that time, it'd be significant, but... Hmm. Well, they can start to regain some map control as they do claim the gem off of the puck. And so, you know, if you're able to find vision around the Roche pit, and you're able to invade the next time that Animal Planet want to go for Roche, which is going to be in 30 seconds, then, you know, your options to get back into the game are a little bit better. Yeah, it's actually... It's Significant. Got this little timer here. If they can hit it, they're they're walking over towards that area. They have no vision right now, though. They are so scared. All they have is the bot lane. I mean, yeah, it's true. It's uh, it's really hard to make this play. But also, it's one of those things oh. where it's so desperation, anyways, that they're gonna go check again. And now they see. Oh, the and you get. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is. I think that this is what you have to do. Right? Like... Oh, Puck's dead for 20 seconds. Yeah. This is like the perfect time. Ooh. Too if bad there was a way, they could make it happen. They're moving in. Ryle is going to start to send his Boyd things walks in. into a sentry range. Uh, he's going to get caught there for the moment. They're trying to bring him down. The Chronosphere It's extra large for some extra control, but the BKB is down there as well. They're taking down one. It's only the first life right now of the Raid King, and they're able to pop the BKB. The turnaround, they lose the Witch Doctor. Are they going to lose any more? Who can just pop back in, and, well, they're going to put the Kibosh onto that. It is Shadow Feet down. It is Ritsu taking the Aegis. And they're gonna buy back on SF, have to get back into this fight. They can't afford to give away another Aegis, but it looks like it's gonna be just that as the chase is going for Pycat. He's in no man's land. <laughs> He's gone. Aegis is playing by Brial solo in the meantime. He's like against a lot the of world. Damage. I mean, they're just gonna keep on kiting him though. And even with the Mjolnir and the Radiance, it wasn't enough. <laughs> The CCNC bought back, I don't know if his TP was on cooldown or what, but buying back just to push out the bot wave, like, you're not accomplishing very much. And maybe he bought back and he was just like, wait, my top Time shrine is, is gone, money. I can't get back to this fight anyway, but then, you know, why buy back at that point? Yeah, I mean, the plus side is he'll have, like, souls for the final defense, but it's really, it's not, a, uh, it's not great. Huh? <laughs> yeah. The situation is, uh, less than ideal right now for OpTic. And Puck is going to be able to not quite get in there. Spike Wraithing will be able to buy back in 10 to 5 seconds, so... Chance. We've got some time before the final countdown. Nice is it going in on it doesn't connect. The Chrono, it hits 4. It's a big one. And the Witch Doctor Ultimate plays beautifully this time. We'll find CC and see he's gone. Pycat buys back. Tries to turn now onto the Witch Doctor, but Kit Track is... Well, get critted to death. But the Dagon Puck is now going to show up. Pycat Maledict on him. Uh, still have his reincarnation back up again if they wanted to go for it. They buy back on the Sand King. Moon's still taking some damage. Pycat starting to make a win. But once he comes back up a second time, they might be in further trouble. 3-3 walks in. Ritsu there yet again. 
he can actually go on this super effectively. They're gonna end up losing Bryle. That's the agents. Jumps still on the ground. 3-3 three, three, looking for a secondary opening. They buy back on the AA as well as they break the Lincolns and back away again. The 35,000 net worth lead, but they're still sort of holding. Radiant structures. Yeah. Ish. Mjolnir is off cooldown again for Pycat, and that's where like the lion's share of his damage is coming from. So, Radiant's top tower. But I fallen. maybe they want to go from fighting against Mega Creeps. I mean, they need to okay, wait for his reincarnation to be back up too. They jump into the trees over here. Now the jump forward. Ritsu looking for an opening. He has Chrono yet again. He does get stunned. Does get silenced. Pops the BKB though. And now turning on a Pycat. Reincarnation time. One, three, three. Looking for a boulder to go through. He's gonna flick away. He dodges the empty center, but they'll find him on the second pass. And despite the stun, a moment of silence for Pycat as he eventually falls. And GG is called. It's gonna be Animal Planet moving on to face the winner of Immortal versus Complexity, which is next. It's definitely Animal Planet's best game. Uh, again, like they still looked like they were they were playing together as a team. So even though their movements were, as I said, predictable, at least they were as a unit, and that's the most important thing for these initial rosters. Is like, if you have a strategy in mind, is everyone going to cooperate? And this game, everyone did cooperate very well. PPD and the rest of Optic Gaming, like they ended up building three blink daggers in the end, but or four blink daggers in the end. Yeah, they had four Blink Daggers, but I don't think we saw them initiate like a single fight. Every single time they were always reactionary, counter initiation, split pushing, losing supports to protect the cores and stuff like that. So Animal Planet definitely deserved that victory. We'll see if any lessons have been learned by the Optic Gaming Squad as these guys will face it off again in just a matter of minutes. But well played to Animal Planet as they will move forward in this Star Ladder NA qualifier. Oh, uh, yeah. Well. It was a really good game. Um, Tsunami, any final words before we go on to our second uh, series of the day here? Um, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Animal Planet. It's it, Supposedly they've been scrimming, so even though like the squad itself has been formally announced very recently, they have been playing together for you know at least a month, I believe. And it looks like that. It doesn't look like, you know, you slapped together five teamless people, which I mean, I, technically, I'm sure is what happened. But like, they're not playing like five pub stars. They're playing like a team. And I don't know who's shot calling for them. And I know that Kitrock was drafting and his drafts have been pretty solid, especially in that game two and game three. And so I'm looking forward to seeing this new North American blood and some of the old, uh, dried out blood come right. back in full force definitely it's uh it's really exciting um and revitalization is what we'll call it for now exactly uh, they're all back in uh full effect and we're gonna have another round of a new team it, well not a new team but a new player on a new team it's gonna be immortals playing and they have mss now playing in the off lane for them along with the normal assortment of uh folks on the other positions and then against them is going to be complexity so this is going to be run at you, Dota, if you've ever seen it. It's going to be complexity, doing some weird, everybody gets some aura strat, and then uh, mortals are just going to, like, pick PA and constantly blink on top of fools and then uh, probably eventually win because that's how they, their games tend to go. Or maybe complexity will to it. it. It'll be great. Uh, so stay tuned, everybody. Thank you all for watching so much. It's an absolute pleasure casting for you guys. You can follow us if you want at Lyrical Dota and at Tsunami643. And, of course, Dota... Uh, at Dota SLTV for Starlighter and at Beyond the Summit. We'll see you guys in a few for our second series, Immortals vs. Complexity.